full-size utility vehicles from Chevrolet, the ruggedly elegant Tahoe, and the prestigious Suburban with unparalleled comfort, towing capacity, and passenger cargo versatility. This month, we'll take a look at new for 97 features for Tahoe and Suburban and see how the all-new Ford Expedition compares to these original full-size utilities. And we meet up with a steering engineer to find out more about speed-sensitive power steering used on Tahoe and Suburban. Our technical review, power steering, a sensitive issue. And in Behind the Bowtie, we talk to a member of the Tahoe brand team to gain some insight into their marketing strategies to blunt the debut of Expedition, reaching the market directly. Our TCE tip gives you a handy little piece of information to point out to customers, sparking a fuse for customer enthusiasm. And Truck Track takes to the track, literally, for the final NASCAR Super Truck event of the season. This month's event coverage, leading Las Vegas. Finally, we've got all the latest truck news. It's all coming up in this issue of Truck Track. Hi, I'm Lowell Perry. And I'm Eden Sage. Welcome to Truck Track. Our focus this month, the full-size utilities, Tahoe and Suburban. They not only offer dependable and long-lasting attributes for customers, they possess the heritage of utility vehicles that only Chevy trucks can offer. After all, Suburban started it all more than 60 years ago. And from the old to the new, let's review what's new on Tahoe and Suburban for 97. Both vehicles are equipped with a cargo area power door locking switch at the rear of the vehicle on the passenger side, allowing for entry and exit from the passenger doors while the driver is loading groceries or luggage. Also new is the addition of speed sensitive power steering with electronic variable orifice or EVO. It reduces the effort needed to steer at low speeds or stationary situations and maintains a tight steering feel and response in higher speed situations like highway travel. We'll have more on that later. Another key feature that customers will appreciate is the tighter turning radius. This year, the four-wheel drive 1500 series models join the rest of the lineup with revised componentry and increased turn angles. The result is improved maneuverability and parking capability. That's something customers are sure to love. Absolutely. And another significant improvement is the addition of a front passenger airbag on all Tahoe and Suburban models. The dual airbags are designed to complement the safety belt system by helping restrain the driver and front passenger in the event of a moderate to severe frontal impact. So let's quickly recap the new for 97 features on Tahoe and Suburban. The rear lock unlock switch, speed sensitive EVO power steering, and dual airbags. Each feature will no doubt prove to be an impressive addition when the benefits are pointed out to full size utility customers. Also new to the segment is the launch of the all-new Expedition, Ford's first serious entry to the full-size utility segment. Developed to fit between the Tahoe and Suburban, Expedition is positioned as a no-compromise full-size sport utility. Ford touts that Expedition fits needs previously unmet by any one vehicle. It's a vehicle that can do it all. Time will tell if that rings true, but when you think of full-size utility vehicles, two words come to mind, Tahoe and Suburban. Here's a brief of what each vehicle offers. Tahoe is available in two and four door models. The two door is available in base, LS, and LT trim levels. The four door in LS and LT. Expedition is only available in a four door model, so I guess it's the vehicle that can do it all except be a two door model. And it's available in two trim levels, XLT and Eddie Bauer. Suburban is available in 1500 and 2500 series models, base, LS, and LT trim levels. Of course, all of these vehicles are available in two or four wheel drive configurations. A little later, Pete Toko will bring us his comparison, showing where Expedition tries to fit between Tahoe and Suburban. But first, here he is with a steering engineer to talk about the attributes and day-to-day -day functionality of the speed-sensitive power steering feature. Pete, take the wheel. Well, thanks, Eden. You know, taking the wheel really is easy with speed-sensitive power steering. 
And with me now to help explain the benefits is Tom Buckley from the GM Truck Product Center. Tom, welcome aboard. Well, thank you, Pete. It's good to be here. Oh, uh, thanks. You know, I got to tell you, I was driving the Tahoe in the parking lot earlier, and I was really impressed with the steering. It's, it's not truck-like at all. So I was wondering if you would explain what speed-sensitive power steering is and, and how it works. Pete, I'd be happy to, and those are good comments. I appreciate those. Uh, the system, the EVO system, is designed to maintain the vehicle stability at highway speeds that we've enjoyed since the 1988 model year, and at the same time address low speed, static uh, parking efforts that our customers have told us they'd prefer to have. The way the system works is through the EVO actuator, the heart of the system, located right at the rear of the power steering pump, reduces the flow to the steering gear as the vehicle speed increases. This increases the steering effort so that we can have the higher effort for highway speeds and the nice light effort for low speed and static steering. Uh, the speed signal from the vehicle is processed through an EVO control module and sends the signal on through to the EVO actuator and adjusts the orifice as required. We also have a speed sensitive uh, hand wheel speed sensor located in the steering column and that provides the required flow for evasive maneuvers. This coupled with a special valve we have in the gear uh, completes the uh, system to deal with our customer requirements for 97 CK trucks. Now, Tom, I'm sure you've driven a truck with this system in it and you mentioned highway speed a moment ago. How does it handle at highway speeds? What's it like? At highway speed, it handles just like our 96 CK trucks did and those were rated to have world-class stability at highway speeds. So our customers should feel the same thing. So really the customer is going to get the best of both worlds. At low speed and highway speed, you're going to get optimum steering capability. That is the objective and uh, that's what the system is designed to do. Absolutely correct. And if I understand you correctly, then this electronic variable orifice is really the heart of the system, this part right here. That is, that is the heart of the system. That is correct. Part you know, of the EVO actuator mounted on the rear side of the power steering pump. You know, more and more women are becoming principal Tahoe drivers. So isn't this a good benefit to point out to customers? This is an excellent benefit to point out to customers, and I've had a number of unsolicited comments from people wherein their, their wives have driven the vehicle and came back and said there is something nice about that truck. It handles very nice, and the, the effort in in conjunction with the improved turn circle that we have in these vehicles, they do like. So, excellent point. Well, that's good for our salespeople to know. Now, this system is in Tahoe and Suburban this year. That is correct. It's on all of our 97 CK vehicles, including Tahoe and Suburban. Tom, thank you so much. You know, if anyone has any questions about steering capabilities or ease of steering, then I'm sure this video will steer them in the right direction. Hopefully so. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for your time. Back to you. You know, Pete mentioned the fact that a growing number of women are the primary drivers of full-size utilities. When you team speed-sensitive power steering with the improved turning radius of both Tahoe and Suburban, you've got a feature benefit that's pretty compelling. If your customers are unsure of the truck-like feel they might expect from a full-size sport ute, let them drive one around the lot. Not only will it showcase the speed-sensitive power steering at low speeds, it will also demonstrate the tighter turning radius of the vehicle. Such a demonstration will help your customers get the message. Speaking of getting the message, part of the effort to blunt expedition is a direct marketing program aimed at full-size utility customers. For more on the campaign and the marketing strategies, Pete Toko took time out from the recent PulseSat broadcast to meet with a member of the Tahoe Suburban brand team. Hey, it's me again. Now for this segment, I'm going to be direct. Well, actually with the help of Dan Ahern from the Tahoe Suburban brand team. We're going to show how Chevrolet is going to be direct. Now I'm talking about the direct marketing program, an integrated fulfillment program aimed at competitive owners and Chevy loyalists. Dan, you and I have been busy. You know, I wanted you to tell us a little bit about the elements of the program. 
Uh, we have a very, as you said, targeted and integrated program for 1997. When we launched the Fort Tahoe back in 95, we had a direct mail program at that time, which went to the same consistent customers that we've had in the past. These are our loyalists, as well as crossover luxury car and the up-level compact sport utility. And we decided to duplicate or build off of that in an integrated approach for 1997 by having a similar program aimed at the same customers. We have 500,000, what we call a teaser mailer, that's going out in October, directed at those type of customers. They have the opportunity to fill out and respond back that they'd like additional information, at which time we'll send them a very nice fulfillment package in a burlap bag that has a journal with product features and information in it and a CD with some music in it. Mm. So. Well, Dan, from a dealership point of view, what can they expect to gain because of the program? Uh, the customers that we're seeing, especially because of this crossover situation, the incomes continue to go up, the education level continues to go up. So these are very high qualified customers that we're driving into the showroom. Well, it sounds like a solid program. Now, if I were one of those target customers, what kind of stuff would you be sending me? Well, there's three different elements to the program. We've talked about the outbound solicitation portion of it. There are also two other elements. We have an 800 number, which is 800-950-TAHOE, which when you call that number, they can answer questions on, on facts and features, but they also can send you additional information, which is this fulfillment package. The third portion of that is the print ads that we have for 1997 on Tahoe, and included in that is what we call a business reply card. Customer can fill out on there uh, their name, address, and then if they want additional information, we will send this fulfillment package, which is a journal which has features and facts inside of it, as well as a CD with music included. So that's a lot of information you're going to be sending them. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we are going to cover the market. Uh, we're not going to stand still based on what uh, Ford, with launching their expedition, we know that part of their strategy, because they're new into the full-size utility market, they have to go after our customers. We've already seen that they, they have and will. So our idea is to essentially blunt their uh, position of coming in with this, with this campaign. Now, Dan, you kind of touched on my last question. I have to ask you this. What other activities do you have planned to blunt the launch of the new expedition? Well, Expedition uh, offers us a, a unique challenge we haven't had out in the full-size utility market before, but I'll, I'll, I'll let you know we have initiatives planned throughout the 97 model year, and we will not stand pat. We will continue to go after the Expedition and the full-size utility market, and especially our customers with this direct mail program. I think you're going to do just fine. I think they're ready for us on the set. Why don't we get back there? Thanks, Pete. We'll see you shortly for your comparison. I'm interested to hear what he thinks of the expedition. Yeah, me too. But before we do that, let's take a look at some of Expedition's strategies planned for the year. Here's a projection of what you'll be up against. Expedition's projected series mix for the 97 model year. The Expedition Eddie Bauer with PEP 687A will comprise approximately 10% of the overall build. The XLT standard with PEP 684A is projected to account for 15%. The Eddie Bauer PEP 686A, 16% of the build. And the XLT value PEP 685A will account for almost 60% of total expedition sales. And 70% of all expeditions are expected to have four-wheel drive. Now that's where the competition is, and that's what Ford will more than likely have on its lots. Pete Toko's comparison will detail not only competitive advantages, but also the equipment on an expedition with PEP 685A. Pete, give us the details. Hey, thanks, Lil Needin. You bet I'll give you the details. Winter's right around the corner here in Michigan. A chill is in the air, and whole St. Nick will soon be here. And let me tell you, a guy like Santa can certainly appreciate the attributes that full-size utilities can offer. Now, I'm here at Hadley Lake in the great outdoors, where Tahoe and Suburban were meant to be. For my comparison today, I've got a Tahoe LS four-wheel drive with a Vortec 5700 V8 and the Expedition XLT with PEP 685A and the 4.6 liter Triton V8. Now the PEP 685A package includes 16 inch aluminum wheels, six way power driver seat cloth captain's chair, floor console, electric speed control, privacy glass, dual illuminated visor vanity mirrors, and a luggage rack. Now as you'll see later on, this Expedition also has optional leather seats for an extra 1300 Now I also brought a Suburban along for good measure, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Now let's start with an enlightening advantage. 
Tahoe is equipped with standard automatic daytime running lamps, or DRLs. During daytime driving situations, reduced intensity low beam headlamps come on automatically to alert others on the road to your oncoming vehicle. Now that's a safety feature you can't get on Expedition at any price. Ford doesn't offer it. So let's see. It's the vehicle with no compromises, but you can't get a two-door or DRLs. Hey Brian, pop the hood. And here's something else they can't get, a Vortec engine. The Vortec 5700 V8 engine that comes standard on Tahoe and Suburban offers 255 horsepower at 4600 RPM. By comparison, the No Compromise Expedition 4.6 liter Triton V8 engine only offers 215 horsepower at 4400 RPM. So our Vortec engine offers more horsepower. In fact, about 19% more horsepower. And Expedition's optional 5.4 liter engine only offers 230 horsepower. Still not up to par with Chevy's standard engine. How about torque? The 4.6 liter Triton V8 offers up to 290 foot-pounds of torque at 3250 RPM. The Vortec twists 330 foot-pounds of torque at 2800 RPM. So I've got to say it again. You can't have it all with Expedition, as long as it doesn't require more than 230 horsepower. Now Tahoe has a couple of unique features that customers aren't going to find on Expedition. Well actually, the thing that makes them most unique is that Expedition doesn't offer them. But they are the kind of features you'd expect on prestigious vehicles like Tahoe and Suburban. For instance, the auto dimming rear view mirror. The electrochromatic design automatically dims to reduce glare from headlights of the vehicle behind you. It also features an integral 8-point compass so you always know where you are. Well, actually you might not always know where you are, but at least you'll know what direction you took to get there. And here's something else I noticed. On both Tahoe and Suburban, these running boards are positioned to do what you'd expect them to do. Offer assistance entering and exiting a vehicle, especially helpful for kids. Tahoe's optional running boards are about a half an inch wider than Expedition's, making it a bit easier to get in and out. The running boards on Tahoe are a $225 option. Expedition's running boards are $435, a no compromise difference of $210. Now, we know these vehicles are generally shopped by upscale, more affluent customers. Having said that, do you think they would prefer the cloth and the carpeted door trim and rear cargo quarter panels that Tahoe and Suburban offer, or the plastic panels on Expedition? Do you think the Tahoe customer's vision of a no compromise vehicle includes plastic trim? <laughs> I doubt it. Another advantage, right here at the rear doors. Tahoe comes standard with panel doors, providing wide open access to the rear cargo area. However, if customers so choose, they can opt for the optional lift glass tailgate at no extra cost. What's the choice on the you can have it all expedition? Well, of course you can have this lift gate. Now while I'm back here, let me show you another neat feature of Tahoe that you can't get on expedition. You know, as a matter of fact, it's on Suburban too. Lowell Neaton talked about it earlier. The cargo area power door locking switch. It's conveniently located right here and let you lock or unlock all the doors while at the rear of the vehicle. Your passengers don't need to wait in the rain or snow while you load items into the back. Oh, by the way, Tahoe and Suburban both have a hatch release button located on the dashboard to open the lift glass from the driver's seat. Expedition doesn't even have one. The only means of getting the lift glass opened is manually, by twisting the handle. Now, here's an important point, because Ford is making a big deal out of the third row seat on Expedition. Ford is going on and on about the third row seating that Expedition offers, room for nine passengers. Well, that's something they have over Tahoe, but if customers are looking for unparalleled passenger and cargo capacity, then Suburban is the vehicle for them. And here's something else I can't quite figure out. Expedition's third row seat dimensions listed by Ford are darn near equal to those we've listed for Suburban. So, it should be equally easy for these three crew members to get into each vehicle and get situated. Let's take a look. Let's get a comment from each of them. 
Now to ensure impartiality, I'll keep them sequestered in this soundproof Suburban and question them individually. Okay, Wally, you're first up. Come on out there. Here you go. Now, what do you think? Did you notice a difference? I found there's a lot more room for my knees in the Suburban. It's a little cramped for, uh, for leg room and knee room in the Expedition. Great. Okay, thank you. Why don't we get Bob out here? Bob, come on out quickly. There you go. Now, Bob, those dimensions were about the same, right? Actually, I was a little bit more comfortable in here, and it's a lot easier to get in and, in and out of the vehicle. Great. Why don't you go get me a sandwich? Roger, why don't we get Roger out here? Roger, make your way out of here. Now, Roger, you're a good-sized guy. Did you have enough headroom? Oh, definitely, Pete. I could keep my head straight up in this vehicle, and in the Expedition, I had to keep it cranked, kind of like this. Wonderful. Great. Well, I could use something to drink. Why don't you step over there? Okay, well, there you have it. Just for the record, here are the published dimensions for Expedition and Suburban. Are they really that close in the real world use? Well, if your customers have been comparison shopping, invite them to try out the third row seat in Suburban. And not only does Suburban have room for nine passengers, nine adult passengers, there's still a realistic amount of room left for golf clubs or luggage. Suburban has a cargo volume of 47.5 cubic feet behind the third row seat. Expedition, 11.9 cubic feet. Suburban has almost four times as much cargo capacity behind the third row seat. The Expedition cargo area will fit in the back of the Suburban four times over. You know, with the vehicle's position like this, it reminds me of the true bookending strategy that Tahoe and Suburban has over Expedition. Now, this isn't a strategy that we created to market against Expedition. We were here long before Expedition. All we did was build two different vehicles designed to meet specific needs and wants. Ford kind of created our bookend strategy by building something in between those needs, kind of like painting yourself into a corner. Full-size utility customers have specific needs and wants they expect from their vehicles, and Tahoe and Suburban are equipped to meet those needs, whether rugged elegance or unmatched towing, passenger or cargo capacity. Now here are some numbers to help illustrate what I mean. First, wheelbase. Tahoe, 117.5 inches. Expedition, 119.1. And Suburban, 131.5. How about overall length? Tahoe measures at 199.6, Expedition at 204.6, and Suburban at 219.5. How about maximum towing capacity? Of course, the vehicles would need to be properly equipped. Tahoe has a maximum towing capacity of 7,000 pounds, Expedition 7,900 pounds, and Suburban 10,000 pounds with the Vortex 7400 V8. And to round out this little no compromise comparison, how about fuel tank capacity? Tahoe has a 30 gallon fuel tank. Expedition offers a 26 gallon capacity on two wheel drive models and a 30 gallon capacity on four wheel drives. And finally, Suburban is equipped with a 42 gallon fuel tank. One place Expedition didn't compromise is in vehicle height. The four wheel drive Expedition is 76 and a half inches tall. That's six feet, four and a half inches. Near as I can tell, it didn't help with headroom. Tahoe, Suburban, and Expedition headroom dimensions are nearly identical. In fact, in the third row, Suburban has over two more inches of headroom. You know something? I wonder if Expedition will even fit into a normal size garage. Ford says it will, so I guess we'll have to take their word for it. But I'll leave it to you to consider this. If the vehicle is 76 and a half inches high, the luggage rack yet another couple of inches, can Expedition fit into a garage or even a parking structure? Suburban doesn't fit in most garages because it's too long. That's one of the reasons why Tahoe is sized the way it is. It's the first garageable full-size sport utility. Now, as you can see from those numbers, the vehicle that offers the no compromises certainly has a lot of, well, compromises. And it's these compromises that customers need to hear about so they can make an informed decision. Now you and I both know that Chevy has owned this segment without any competition, but it's the heritage and experience that we offer that can also be our advantage. In fact, that's the focus of Toco's tip this month. <music> Customers need to know that Tahoe and Suburban are designed and engineered to serve specific customer needs. By qualifying customer use and even who the principal driver of the vehicle will be, you can certainly make a strong sell for one of these Chevys and point out the compromising position of the Expedition. 
I mean, come on, you saw the graphic earlier. Expedition has 11.9 cubic feet of cargo room with the third seat in place. That's their idea of no compromise? I'm surprised they can even get the rear door shut. How about the Vortec V8 engine on Tahoe that has more horsepower than either of the Triton engines, the base 4.6 or the optional 5.4 liter Triton V8? Those are just a few examples of things you can point out to show that Expedition will leave customers in a state of compromise. They can have their no compromise vehicle. I'll stick with Tahoe and Suburban, the vehicles that offer more standard and optional horsepower, more standard and optional torque, more cargo capacity, more trailering capacity, more model availability, and with Suburban, more real nine passenger seating than Expedition. Now, let's go back to Lowell Needham to find out just how much compromise is going for nowadays. While comfortable in the outdoors, Tahoe and Suburban's luxurious appointments are equally at home when owners are dressed for a night on the town, going out to the theater or to a restaurant. Yeah. You know, Pete made a valid point when he mentioned that full-size customers never had to shop the market before. Now many of them will be comparing prices, so we worked up a little price ladder to let you see how things shake out in the segment. All prices are base MSRP of four-wheel drive configurations, including destination. Okay, let's start with the Tahoe LS at 32125. Now the Expedition XLT base MSRP is 3510. But a truer comparison to the Tahoe LS equipment would be the Expedition XLT with PEP 685A. It has an MSRP of 32125, the same as Tahoe LS. But remember, Expedition only has a standard 4.6 liter V8. The optional 5.4 V8 is an extra $565. The Expedition Eddie Bauer is $34,515, and the Tahoe LT is $33,615. These vehicles are pretty equally equipped, but again, the Eddie Bauer is powered by the 4.6 V8. The 5.4 is 565 bucks. Here are where the Suburban models fit. The base Suburban at 27,924. Suburban LS at 34,797. And the Suburban LT at 36,787. And Tahoe LS two-door model has a base MSRP of 26,797. Your salesperson pocket card lists MSRP comparisons you can use as a reference to help keep customers informed. And keeping customers informed is the subject of our next segment, Focus on TCE. Lowell, our Focus on TCE just might light a fuse of total customer enthusiasm for some of your potential buyers. It has to do with the fuse box on Chevy trucks. Located off the driver's side of the dashboard, the fuse box panel is home to a handy pair of fuse pluckers and a spare of each amp fuse. The walk around or delivery presentation are both good times to point out this feature. You can bet any of your customers will be grateful for the information should they need a fuse in an emergency situation. That's a tip that will get customers back on the road in no time. Speaking of the road, it's time for our event coverage. The NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Truck Track went up close and personal to the final race of the season, the CarQuest Auto Parts 420K Super Truck Series race at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Jack Sprague won the race and Ron Hornaday Jr. won the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series overall title. Chevrolet was well represented in the series. The top three drivers, Ron Hornaday Jr., Jack Sprague and Mike Skinner all drive Chevy trucks. We wanted to find out just what's so special about super truck racing. I thought when this thing came along, it was going to be good, but I didn't expect it to get this big this quick. And then when it did, I said, well, it'll level off real quick. Well, that hasn't happened. It's still very exciting. Uh, we're getting bigger and better crowds, uh, record crowds almost everywhere we go. And uh, I think this series is here to stay. Of course, it's special to Chevrolet because Chevy trucks wrapped up the manufacturer's title. And with the faithful and near fanatical following of the super truck fans, Chevy participation is good for all of us. Well, I had a choice when I started either to go with the Ford or Chevy, and I just felt that the Chevy would be more dependable, you know, so that's my choice. Uh, we've been great. We ran four races, qualified first round all four races. Uh, we finished good. 
you know, the aerodynamics are good on the Chevy truck. Uh, the motors are making good horsepower, good cylinder heads. I would say that's probably contributes to the whole thing. The NASCAR Super Truck Series, another showcase for the most dependable, longest lasting trucks, Chevy trucks. Now that's not news to anyone, but our next segment is Breaking News. In breaking news, we've got some dirt on the mid-size sport utility that Dodge will be offering in the spring of 1998. It's based on the Dakota platform and called the Durango. Preliminary information indicates it will offer standard dual airbags and rear-wheel anti-lock brakes. Four-wheel ABS is likely to be standard on up-level models. We hear it's slated to have the same standard engine as the Dakota, the 3.9-liter V6. However, it's rumored that Dodge is working on offering a new engine to replace the 4-liter I6 and 5.2 V8 that are currently used in Jeep Cherokee. Also, it was recently announced the 1996 model year for Chevrolet was the best in 20 years for sales. Combined car and truck sales for the period were 2,605,239. And Chevy Truck posted its best year in its 85-year history with sales of 1,485,814 units. Blazer, Tahoe, and Suburban all posted record sales years. Congratulations! And congratulations are in order to the all-new Chevrolet Malibu, recently named Motor Trend's 1997 Car of the Year. And we've got one more bit of good news. Consumers Digest recently named Tahoe a Best Buy for 1997. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you next time with a profile on Venture Minivan versus the Dodge Caravan. On behalf of Pete, Lowell, and myself, thanks for watching.